The importance of having a boiler certificate. Buying miniature steam engine boilers can be a big problem if they do not have a boiler test certificate. What is a boiler certificate and why do you need one? A boiler certificate is a requirement if you want to run in public and it just certifies that your pressure vessel will easily cope with its working pressure and it will not explode when it's being used. Normally you would give a steam boiler a hydraulic test to twice working pressure every four years and check the working pressure annually. The regulations regarding pressure vessels for miniature steam engines are quite stringent these days. Once upon a time model boilers were riveted together and then caught with soft solder. A riveted and soft soldered method of construction is frowned upon these days and a copper steam boiler would normally be silver soldered or copper welded. This is my unfinished sterling single and it has a current boiler certificate. It runs beautifully and it's entirely safe. If you just want to run your steam locomotive entirely for your own entertainment with no other people present, then you don't need a boiler certificate. But if anyone else is in the vicinity, you need a boiler certificate. It's not rocket science to realise that you could be playing with something dangerous if it isn't tested and certified. Locomotives like these that run in public spaces have to have a current boiler certificate at all times. Personally, I've never seen a steam boiler explode, but I do have a book showing full-size boiler explosions, and it's horrific. If you have a steam engine like this one, a Mammoth steam tractor, you do not need a boiler certificate. These small steam toys are exempt because they run at a very low pressure. But when they get a bit bigger, and this is a 5 inch gauge simplex locomotive, they definitely need a boiler certificate. Also, my large traction engine needs a boiler certificate, and indeed it has one. My recommendation is that anyone contemplating buying a miniature steam engine would be ill advised to buy one without a boiler certificate. It's not too bad if the thing that you're buying doesn't have a boiler certificate that is current, but has one. But it's worth bearing in mind that if a boiler fails the boiler test, then it could still be sold with a lapsed certificate. And you really will not know whether the boiler is any good until you have it tested. Steel boilers have become very popular. The rules and regulations for building a steel boiler specify that during the construction of a steel boiler, as far as I'm aware, even the materials that you make it from have to be tested and certified. The steel boiler in this locomotive is very well made, but it doesn't have a test certificate or any history. The owner of this engine had to have the boiler professionally tested, and at first was just considering buying a new boiler from a commercial supplier. In any case, the old boiler had to come off the frames for a visual inspection before a whole range of tests were performed on it by the boiler inspector. The good news is that it would appear that this boiler has now passed its test and it will be coming back shortly to be refitted to the locomotive. But this could quite easily have not been the case. I've had a small copper boiler in my workshop for quite a long time. I thought it would be a good idea to perform a hydraulic test on this boiler and make a video about it. Here's an extract from the video. Before starting the job of checking the threads and giving the boiler a hydraulic test, it's time for a visual inspection. One small part of the silver soldering doesn't look as good as the rest, so I wanted to have a closer look and check that it was OK. And during the inspection process, I had a look to make sure that it was silver solder and not soft solder. And the good news is, it's silver solder. Had it have been soft solder, the episode would have ended here. I used a selection of taps and blanking plugs to obtain the thread forms. The larger of the two bushes on the back head for the water gauge are threaded quarter of an inch by 32 threads per inch. And the two bushes at the front of the boiler for the check valves are also threaded quarter by 32 threads per inch. There's a smaller boiler bush on the back head for the water gauge union, and that is threaded 3 sixteenths by 40 threads per inch. Here's the boiler connected to my test rig, which was calibrated at the steam workshop a couple of years ago. 
I used the stopwatch on the phone to indicate the length of time it was on test. For the purposes of the video, I left this boiler on test for an hour, which is much longer than the normal requirement. I would say that this small boiler has passed the hydraulic test with flying colours. The annoying thing is though, I need to have this boiler tested by an appointed boiler tester at either the club that I'm a member of or at my friend Simon Hudson's place called the Steam Workshop. If I build this boiler into a marine steam plant connected to the small Cheddar Puffin steam engine, I will require a valid boiler certificate in order to sail the boat at the model boat club that I'm a member of. Testing the boiler of a small steam locomotive. I built this engine in 1996. And here it is having a hydraulic test. I built the model locomotive, I did not build the boiler, it was built by a professional. Here you can see the pipe connecting it all together. And as you can clearly see from the gauge, when I get up to 180 pounds per square inch and let go of the handle, then the pressure drops slightly. It's a small tender hand pump that I use for this, and over the years it may be a bit leaky now. The first thing to do with my small torch, you can't see it very well but I can, is to look in the fire hole door. Finding a water leak in the firebox is serious, but luckily this one is bone dry. As the pressure was ramped up to 180 psi, the water gauge gland started leaking, so this was an easy fix, I tightened the nuts. For the purposes of the video, I pumped the boiler up to 190 pounds per square inch, or 196 pounds per square inch, because as I've just mentioned, when the gauge was calibrated, I found out it was six pounds per square inch out. This clip shows the view from the inside of the smoke box, and as you can see, everything in here is very dry. No water at all, not even a drop. This has always been a good boiler. It was built for me by a friend of mine, a professional model engineer, and his name is Randy Blackburn. A model engineer extraordinaire, some of the things he used to make amazed me. He also built me a boiler for a Highlander, which is a 7.25 inch gauge Black 5, and a Sweet William. And believe me, both of those boilers were incredibly heavy. The water gauge has stopped leaking, so I went in the house and made a cup of tea, and about 15 minutes later I came back and dropped the pressure. I dropped the pressure just by opening one of the steam valves. After a hydraulic test, to complete the sequence, you need to perform a live steam test. And here is my friend Alexander Cairns, driving the locomotive around my garden railway at my other house. The live steam test is really to test the safety valves. This engine's boiler runs at 90 pounds per square inch and the second safety valve blows off and all excess pressure over 90 psi is dissipated easily. That's it for this video about boiler certificates. Stay safe, stay healthy, do not blow yourself up. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful.